talk about stock splits and stock dividends. Stock dividends as opposed to cash dividends. Or, as I like to call both of these, mailing out pieces of paper instead of mailing out dollars. So all we're going to do, whether it's called a stock split or a stock dividend, is chop our company up into smaller pieces. If you owned 10% of the company before the stock split or the stock dividend, after the stock split or the stock dividend, you're still going to own 10% of the company. Okay, so a stock split simply divides the company up into smaller pieces. Let me tell you a story. Suppose you've got a restaurant and you sell pieces of pie. And you cut each pie into four pieces and you sell each piece for $25. Maybe you think, hey, you know what, that's a lot of money. People won't pay $25 for a piece of pie. But what if I cut each pie into eight pieces? Then each piece of pie would be $12.50. That might make more sense. It might be more marketable. Well, it's the same thing with stock prices. If your company is trading at 100 bucks a share, if you split it two for one so that everybody who had one share before the split now has two shares after the split, then the stock price should go from $100 down to 50 and that should make it more marketable. Now, ever since Google came along and ever since uh, Warren Buffett came along with his Berkshire Hathaway, that brings all this logic into question. It seems like stocks trade just fine in any particular range. So the good news is it's really simple for us as accountants. For a stock split, there is no journal entry. There's no money changing uh, between accounts. All we do is make a note that the, if it, for instance, if it were two for one, if the par value were two cents per share before the two for one split, we make a note that now the new par value is one cent per share. Stock dividend is the same kind of idea. We're going to divide the pie up, we're going to divide that company up into more pieces. Maybe we declare a 10% stock dividend. That means if you had 10 shares before the dividend, after the stock dividend, you'll have 11 shares. You've got 10% more. But you still own that same percentage. So if before the stock dividend you owned 5% of the company, after the stock dividend you own 5% of the company. But there is a journal entry to make in the case of a stock dividend. What happened was before 1941, companies were doing stock dividends all the time, and the Committee on Accounting Procedures, which preceded uh, FASB, said that they were misleading people into thinking that these were valuable pieces of paper. And they said, if you want to declare, declare a stock dividend, that's fine, but you've got to take monies out of retained earnings and you have to move them into paid in capital. And they said what you have to move is the market value. Before they moved the par value, and as we all know, the par value is one cent a share, half a cent per share, that's nothing. And so they said, if you declare a small stock dividend, you're going to have to take money out of retained earnings and move it into paid in capital. After all, would you rather invest in a company that had billions of dollars invested by other people or billions of dollars that it had earned over the years? So let's pretend that a company has 50,000 shares of stock outstanding at $10 par, and it's currently traded at $15 a share, and they declare a 10% stock dividend. So when I, these things can be kind of hard. So when I attack them, the first thing I do is figure out how many shares we're going to issue. If it's 50,000 shares, 10% of that is 5,000 shares. Then I have to figure out how many dollars are we going to move out of retained earnings and into paid in capital. So we'll look at the market value of the shares. Uh, it's $15 per share. We're going to issue 5,000 shares. Therefore, we're going to take $75,000 and move it out of retained earnings and into paid in capital. Okay, so uh, we're issuing 10% of 50,000 shares. We're issuing 5,000 new pieces of paper. The par value for this stock, remember, was $10 a share. So 5,000 times $10 is $50,000. But we're not going to credit the par value directly. Instead, we're going to credit this unusual account called Common Stock Dividends Distributable. It's the brother of cash dividends payable. I call it a reminder account. It reminds us we have to issue new pieces of paper. And since the total is $75,000, 
In other words, the stock was trading at $15 a share. We're issuing 5,000 new shares. That's $75,000. It's going to reduce retained earnings. Anything above that $50,000 is going to go into paid in capital in excess of par. And so don't be concerned that we didn't debit retained earnings directly. Remember, retained earnings at the beginning plus net income minus dividends gives us retained earnings at the end. That applies to stock dividends as well as cash dividends. So we're reducing retained earnings with a debit and we're increasing paid in capital. So we're penalizing the company a little bit for declaring a stock dividend. We're saying if you want to give people new pieces of paper, that's fine, but you've got to move the market value of those shares out of retained earnings and into paid in capital so it looks like somebody gave you that money instead of you earning it. And so let's say it's December 31st, it's time to mail out the new uh, pieces of paper. Remember we credited this account called Common Stock Dividends Distributable. It's the brother, it's the cousin, it's the uh, doppelganger of cash dividends payable. It's got this ABLE at the end here that reminds us we got to do something. What do we have to do? We have to mail out the new pieces of paper. So let's say we're supposed to distribute them on December 31st. So this is a, a little reminder account. We recognize that we're finally mailing that stuff out. And so we take that reminder account off our books with a debit and we credit common stock, the par value for those shares. In other words, there were 5,000 shares, the par value was 10. And so now we credit common stock for $50,000. So what's happened by virtue of these two journal entries is we've taken $75,000 out of retained earnings and moved it into paid in capital.